Hi, I'm Tam with the Scope with your solar storm forecast for the week of August 4th. This week brings back a lot of activity to the Earth-facing disk with no less than seven active regions that are come into view. Along with that, we have multiple filament eruptions. You can see this one here from July 30th in the same region. I shot one again on August 1st, and both of these were nearly Earthward directed. On top of that, we've had uh, multiple M flares. There's been three of them this past week. And to top it all off, we're watching this amazing filament here that's 30 Earth lengths long that's snaking into uh, Earth strike zone right now. So if this thing erupts, it could lead us to a very large solar storm. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see we've actually had one, two, three, almost four M-class flares, and activity has since died down a little bit. But that's not the big story here. The big story have been the filament eruptions. Those are the things that have brought us the most activity. Switching to coronagraphs, here's that filament eruption on the 30th, and here's the one on the 1st. You can see by those red lines, those are partial halo eruptions, which means they are earthward directed. Unfortunately, these things didn't give us a direct hit. They just managed to graze us, so we didn't get uh, storm levels. All we got was unsettled conditions on the 2nd and the 3rd, but even that was enough to give us gorgeous aurora in Minnesota. Here's uh, August 2nd and August 3rd. We had gorgeous aurora in Alberta, Canada, and also in Michigan. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is stereo, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's stereo B staring at the sun from behind. And you can see most of the activity is all moving onto the east limb. There's not a lot of activity going on on the backside right now. So pretty much everything we're looking at uh, that's rotating into Earth will be all we see for the next few days. Switching to science grade maps that show all of the active regions all over the sun, I'm going to focus in on this grouping here because these are the ones that have just rotated onto the Earth disk. And you can see these arrows, these show the regions of most growth, and that's region 2132 and 2134. Everything pretty much behind them is kind of dying out, so I think these are going to be the regions to watch for this week. Returning to the disk, you can see region 21, 21, and 26 have since moved off to the west limb, but now we're dealing with this cluster of four active regions that's rotating the center. We've got region 21, 27, and 21, 30. Those were the source of these M flares uh, from earlier this week, but they have since stabilized. Yet we've got region 21, 32 is still showing growth, and region 21, 34, that's the newest player that's rotating onto the Earth disk. So we still have a chance of M flares for this week. Taking a look at your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the next week, we are still currently in a high speed stream, so couple that with the minor filament eruptions that we keep having and you have very disturbed solar wind. So expect at high latitudes over the next few days to continue to have active conditions to possibly minor storm conditions well into the 5th and the 6th. Uh, they should be dying down at that time. And down at mid-latitudes, we can see active conditions. We have been having active aurora, as you saw, so we can continue that over the next day or two. The thing should settle down by the end of this week. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlooks, NOAA has given about a 40 to 45 percent chance of M flares uh, over the next three days, with it's probably declining uh, as the week continues on, with only about a 5 percent chance for X flares. But a lot of this is going to be contingent upon what region 2132 and 2134 do. Also for particle radiation storms, uh, expect that when that cluster of four regions rotates further to west, we're going to see maybe a slight increase in your chance of radiation storms. But for the most part, the risk is going to remain pretty low. So this week looks to continue the fun we've already been having. We are in aurora conditions now, and that should continue over the next few days. So it might mean you have issues with your GPS uh, navigation if you're at high latitudes, but for those of us at mid-latitudes, it should be okay. And remember, we've got that huge filament that's just waiting to erupt. It's rotated into Earth strike zone, and if it erupts, it will send us an Earthward-directed solar storm. And that can throw all of our forecasts right out the window. So you better believe I'm watching the sun very closely. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.